After any business startup, the next stage is enterprise growth. That's our point of focus today. Remember in our preceding episode, we looked at uh, business startup. My name is Regina Orlando and with me are our resident panelists. Uh, on my immediate right is uh, Dr. Bernard Nashuma, a lecturer of entrepreneurship, Mo University. And at the furthest end is Mr. David uh, Sargon, a uh, lecturer of entrepreneurship, Mo University. Welcome to the program. Uh, Dr. Nashum, as we begin, what is enterprise growth? Enterprise growth is an important aspect of the entrepreneurial process, but for us to get uh, really the idea of where it fits in the entire process, we will briefly look at uh, the various stages uh, uh, in the entrepreneurial process. Mm -hmm. Firstly, an entrepreneur has to make a decision mm -hmm. to be an entrepreneur or not and uh, that means that has to change from the current lifestyle mm. to a new lifestyle and once that decision has been made the entrepreneur will start the process of searching for ideas mm -hmm. and it's recommended that you search for as many ideas as possible probably up to 40 or 45 and then you screen them uh, you bring them down to probably five and once you have done that you prioritize by picking the best idea that can be implemented Entrepreneurship is about options. Mm -hmm. It is not about one thing. Uh, once you have uh, screened the ideas and identified what you need, you do the planning, which we have already covered. Sure. You look for finance. Uh, you undertake the setup. That is the determination of uh, the form of business organization, mm -hmm. the decision on the location, the decision on the management team, and uh, the decision on uh, really when to start and how to get the legal framework for the entire enterprise. Once you have done that, you enter the process of uh, launching the enterprise. Mm -hmm. That is a startup process. Sure. After the startup, you move to growth and development. And that is what we are focusing on today. Sure. Growth really implies that an enterprise has to change in various aspects of its functional areas. For example, finance, mm -hmm. marketing, uh, uh, employees and uh, market coverage and that growth implies that even the growth in profit has to be realized. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Sergono, from what Dr. Terry has highlighted, what then facilitates enterprise growth? Thank you Regina. In uh, enterprise growth uh, there are quite a number of issues that really facilitate the growth of the business and um, as he has alluded the process about um, enterprise growth is uh, a consequence of an idea which has been screened and that idea has been seen to be viable in the market and therefore the first thing that you need to consider when you want to have the business grow is actually the demand of the product if that product has demand in the market therefore it will lead to more sales and therefore you'll be able to really grow because the growth we are talking about is perhaps the increase in your sales the second aspect that you need to really focus on is the financial resources that you have. Mm -hmm. Most businesses begin with what we call shoestring budget, but we expect that the, the, the business to really uh, have enough resources maybe when it moves into the growth uh, stage, because that growth stage will mean that your product has been appreciated in the market. Mm -hmm. And if people appreciate in the market, then they may want to buy more. If you're buying one unit, you want to buy maybe five units. So we expect that we have the resources to really increase the, the, the production. You scale up what you're producing. Now the other issue that also may determine whether the business will grow is the kind of employees that you have. Uh, in most cases, if you have the best employees who won, I mean, who have uh, the passion of running that business, and fellows who have actually uh, uh, be entrenched into what you want to achieve as an entrepreneur, you'll find that the business will do well. So the human resources are also very important. Uh, fourthly, is the issue of the leadership. You are a leader as an entrepreneur. That is why at the startup point we just say that uh, the entrepreneur must be there. He's the one who is providing the vision. So you, we expect you to really keep the leadership that it demands so that we have the business moving from that maybe a low level of sales, you increase the sales, maybe you also have the capacity to manage maybe few employees as you increase the employees. So the entrepreneurial uh, leadership uh, strategies are also very, very important. And uh, more importantly is about the entrepreneur's choice. You may choose to increase, I mean, to grow your business. Some may choose to stagnate the business because of other factors. It could be your market. You have stagnated your market and therefore you may not want to expand the business. So you want to just remain maybe small. So those are some of the issues that you need to really consider when you want to facilitate growth of your business. 
Dr. Mashume, you are addition on the same? In addition to those factors pertaining to enterprise growth, we also have an uh, enterprise environment. And the enterprise environment comprising of various forces like political forces, legal forces, economic forces, technological forces, social cultural forces, and informational forces will have a great impact on the ability of an enterprise to grow. Generally, we summarize by saying that the environment ought to be conducive, mm -hmm. ought to be favorable for an enterprise to grow. The second aspect is the inability to achieve entrepreneurial transition. And this is very important because as the enterprise starts, it is in entrepreneurial phase. Mm -hmm. But once you reach the growth stage, then you have to change the approach and uh, bring on board other people to support the growth of the enterprise. Many entrepreneurs find it difficult to let go and therefore still remain entrepreneurial instead of moving to the growth-oriented status of the enterprise. Sometimes some may not have the capacity to make decisions, but they continue to make decisions and that really hinders the growth of the enterprise. Sometimes again we find that the original ideas that the entrepreneur had hardly change and yet they ought to change to conform to the growth status that will have been achieved in the enterprise. And gentlemen, having uh, explained all that, how then can entrepreneurs uh, measure enterprise growth? Uh, Mr. Sergon. There are quite a number of dimensions that you can use as an entrepreneur to measure whether your business is growing or not. One of the dimensions that uh, you use is uh, the share of your market. What market share do you control as an entrepreneur? So if you control maybe a certain percentage like 60 70 percent and you increase to 90 percent then there is some growth or you're controlling 10 percent then you're moving to 25 percent it means that you're actually witnessing some growth in the business number two is the sales volume that you also experience which is indeed tie, uh, tied to the, to the to the market share how much have you been selling the first month the second month in, in the next one year, how many units do you sell in, a, in, in that kind of enterprise? So the sales volume also is another indicator of um, uh, growth in, in business. Thirdly, there is the issue of number of employees. As most businesses begin, they do begin with one uh, employee, the entrepreneur and the employee. So there could be two only. But as the business expands, then you may be forced to drop in maybe some other employees who are, have some expertise in other areas. It could be a finance, uh, uh, I mean an accountant, you may hire maybe a procurement officer. You may maybe someone to do marketing for you. So as the business grows, then we witness also the number of employees increasing in, in, in the market. So generally those are issues that are, 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 are very critical. But if you look at the sales volumes, of course, it will bring in the issue of profits. So you can also say profitability can be used as a measure of this, especially if you've done your pricing right. Because at times you may make a lot of sales, but then your pricing was wrong. So you may not be break even in, in, in the business. So generally, those are some of the issues that you need to really check when you want to know whether your business is, is doing. Okay, thank you so much for that. In addition to those measures, we also have uh, technology. Adoption of technology constitutes also an important aspect in the growth of an enterprise. And in addition, the entrepreneur will also be able to develop a number of networks which could include uh, professional networks, could include social networks, and could include managerial networks. The purpose of all these networks is to be able to reach out to more resources, more opportunities for exploitation of the enterprise. And uh, gentlemen, what are the strategies that should be embraced by any entrepreneur who wants to increase the success of any enterprise growth? Now, Regina, we are assuming that an entrepreneur is, uh, is prepared to run the business. Eh? He has the requisite skills to do all that. But over and above the capacity of the entrepreneur with regard to all those skills, this entrepreneur also needs a mentor. Mm -hmm. A mentor is somebody who will provide you some sort of guidelines mm -hmm. on what you want to do. You act like an understudy, you act like a coach. So he'll be able to show you maybe how to learn the ropes and so on and so forth. So we expect these entrepreneurs to really have fellows who can act as their mentors who can give them some guidelines at one point in time. Because there are a lot of challenges faced when you are at this particular phase. So you need to have somebody who can help you. The other one also is you need to actually and have... Maybe before you move to the next point, so mm -hmm. do you think that most entrepreneurs have realized the importance of uh, mentors in their enterprises? Now, most entrepreneurs, um, it's a yes and, or, and a no. Because 
Those who have actually appreciated the importance of mentors are doing pretty well. Those who have not seem to be shying away from it. But I want to tell you that uh, a mentor doesn't necessarily mean somebody who is doing the same, same business you're doing. It could be somebody who is just doing other issues, but he's a person who can actually encourage you. A person who can give you maybe some second thought of what you're thinking about. So we may not really cast on stone and say most entrepreneurs don't really pay a lot of attention on mentoring. But we are, there are those who uh, pay attention and there are those who are yet to pay attention. This is actually a forum where they need to appreciate that mentors are very important. The second issue that I was to say is that uh, entrepreneurs need to really build network. network whether formal or informal is very important for a business. A network which is informal can help you maybe link up your client clientele. You have maybe a client who is going to sell your product. And they do say in marketing, the best marketer in any kind of business is a satisfied customer. So if you do your work well and you satisfy the customer, you'll find that somebody will refer another person to you. And so you build a network. You have to have network networks with other partners. It could be your your you are, you are, you are, you are members within the value chain could be the supply of your raw materials, supply of uh, maybe maybe the, the buy of your products. So if you have a tight network where you'll be able to really fulfill their needs, then you are likely to really succeed. Now you also need to really reach, get information about other entrepreneurs, especially within the industry that, where, where you are domiciled. Because in most cases you'll find uh, we crop in the dark as entrepreneurs. So the most critical thing is that if you are venturing into say uh, a certain business like uh, you want to sell pork, in a butchery. You need to really share with those who are doing the same business so that you understand the challenges they face. And once you know the challenges they face, then you are able to mitigate maybe these challenges in advance. So it is very important that we really appreciate that. Hi, Dr. Nashima, what's your take on the strategies? In addition to the strategies already mentioned, we find that uh, an entrepreneur ought to assess uh, personality uh, his personality or her personality and also assess business preferences. For example, if you are somebody who cannot really engage with people easily, then you have to choose a business that will not demand you engaging with the people. And equally, you have to look at the type of business that you are venturing in. Uh, secondly, you need to study the industry in which you are and understand what goes on uh, in terms of whether it is uh, in the growth phase, whether it's in the declining phase. Once you know that, then you can stretch yourself so that you get a position in that industry. And uh, uh, finally, uh, you need to acquire or improve uh, critical skills because these are the skills that will drive the enterprise to growth. Sometimes we refer to it as execution intelligence that you require to run the enterprise. We are taking a short break, but remember to keep the program more interactive by sending your feedback and comments through the number on your screen.